uh, a series of presentations on some laser scanning workflows. So this is the first of a series of presentations we're going to be holding throughout the year, hopefully one every quarter. And they're going to be covering laser scan technologies, workflows, possibly a combination of both. What we found out, or what we've seen over the last year or so, is um, what we say traditional workflows, workflows that are sat with EPC companies, with general contractors, they're finding their way further through the, uh, the construction cycle. So the, the EPC work traditionally done by the EPC companies now seems to be being picked up by piping contractors, Flooring contractors are picking up work with, with laser scanners that was traditionally the domain of the, uh, the general contractor. So we're seeing the trades rather than consultants moving into laser scanning. So we're, we're hoping to introduce some workflows, some ideas, some concepts to, to those working in those, uh, those areas. So a quick introduction. Uh, I'm Stephen Vickers. I'm the 3D laser scanning pre-sale support with, uh, with Cancel. I've been with Cancel for, for three years now. Prior to that, I had a laser scanning experience with uh, WSP Focus, and before that, with uh, Thames Water in the UK. So I've been around laser scanning for, for quite a while. But if you're uh, coming to Cancel or looking to adopt this technology, uh, undoubtedly our paths will cross. Uh, I'm co hosting this presentation with uh, Sharif Ibrahim from our professional services team. So, Sharif, could you just uh, introduce yourself, please? Yes, thanks, Steve. Uh, so thanks uh, for uh, everybody for joining us today uh, and greetings from uh, Vancouver. So Sharif Ibrahim is cancel. Uh, I'm leading the scanning and uh, photogrammetry uh, technical side of the business here was cancel almost seven years was cancel. Uh, before that, I was um, doing a PhD. I got my degree from University of Calgary on uh, uh, mobile mapping. Almost 20 years of uh, survey background, and well, uh, as uh, Stephen mentioned, we're going to show you some of the workflows. We we have tons of workflows, but uh, for the time uh, limit we have, we'll show you some of them. But uh, uh, based on your feedbacks, we'll do quarter uh, uh, presentations, and each time we we'll focus on one of these uh, workflows, and we are open for any uh, ideas. Okay, thank you, Sharif. So just uh, a bit of um, administration before we get going. So everyone is muted. If you have any questions, please uh, fill in the, uh, the, the questions using the appropriate button. We will be recording this uh, video, so it'll be available for you uh, downstream if you need to revisit anything or, or share with colleagues. The areas we'll be looking at are some survey workflows, some feature extraction, cloud classification, and some surface and volumes. Moving into the plant environment, some piping and ISO production, and then something a little bit more specific around tank inspe uh, inspection and analysis. And finally, we'll wrap up with some interior applications, floor plan extraction and floor flatness, so more into the construction environment. And then we'll wrap up with, uh, with some quick Q&A. So just quickly, quick overview of Cancel, who we are, for those of you that haven't uh, come across us. So we've been in business for over 50 years, predominantly in the, the survey and measurement field, 100% Canadian owned and operated, 600 employees from Atlantic to Pacific, based out of 20 offices. So we are, we are constantly growing, but we have a, a very big footprint within Canada. The areas we operate in, um, most people are aware of the uh, the cancel bubble there in the in the top left hand corner. That's the traditional survey uh, piece where we have our origins. So that's Trimble, Spectra, Faro Hardware, and also we have field and safety supplies. Solid CAD is our Autodesk business, the biggest Autodesk supplier in Canada. So they dovetail very nicely in with uh, with the survey hardware as well. Moving uh, clockwise, building point, they're the area of our business in vertical construction. So anything high rise falls under building point, and they're very much invested in the Trimble products, total stations, scanners, and also some virtual design consultancy as well. Effigis is a consultancy that provides satellite and uh, remotely derived data. 
And Vantage is a fairly new part of the, uh, the cancel business. These guys deal with precision agriculture, so machine control in the, uh, in the farming and agricultural area, and also LIDAR and, and spatial analysis. And finally, Cobalt, uh, this is a rebranding of our wide uh, format printing business. These are the guys that are gonna supply you with, with printers, paper, ink, uh, and all your printing supplies. So we have that, that full circle there of, of filter finish, which is the, the strap line we like to promote. So jumping ahead into to what we're gonna show you, we're gonna show you a variety of workflows. And these are, are using different sensors, different pieces of software. We're not gonna show you workflows that are constrained to, to one manufacturer in, in particular. We're gonna mix and match different hardware with software. So we'll have some solutions that show data from a Faro scanner, processed through a Trimble piece of software. But in terms of the hardware that's uh, on show today, we have data from the Faro scanner, the S-series scanner. So a, a traditional classic static tripod based scanner, million points per second, full dome scanner. The other tool that we have is the Trimble SX10. So some of you out there are familiar with this, uh, a combination of robotic total station and scanner. So high end robot with, with a scanning capability. So that's a bit of a game changer in terms of some of the workflows in, in how we capture data and, and ultimately how we process it. So uh, Sharif, do you like to? Yeah, thanks. So uh, regarding the software uh, side, we have uh, tons of solutions in house, but for, uh, for this presentation, we're gonna show you a um, couple of solutions we have in house. So uh, uh, business center uh, is a survey uh, software and it's able to you know deal with uh, conventional data, uh, laser scanning data, doing uh, some drones processing as well. Um, so uh, when we deal with the SX10 data, it's going to be mainly business center and real works. Uh, we have also a for workflow right now to sell the SX10 uh, with as built so we have tools in uh, business center to grab the sx10 data all the scan data and then export uh, into recap then you can work in as built um, as built uh, if you are not familiar with this software it's like a plugin uh, under autodesk so this is like a, a scene add-on to uh, autodesk products like uh, if you have civil 3d uh, plant autocad and rivet as well so it gives you the option and the capability to work with large uh, scan data uh, inside AutoCAD. Uh, Trimble RealWorks is Trimble product. Um, it got all the tools starting from uh, uh, registering the scan data, cloud-based, target-based registration, all those stuff. And then a uh, uh, couple of productions and analysis tools for survey workflows for uh, pipe and beams and tanks and all uh, those stuff. So the main focus in this uh, presentation, as I mentioned, is going to be all these uh, three software. And you might have the same solution in different uh, software. Uh, and, and I'm going to talk about this when we uh, go through the videos. OK, thank you. So moving into the, the first piece we have here, we've got some feature extraction using it some data derived from a Faro scanner. There's a nice road intersection, looks like a traditional topo style of plan. We have uh, plenty of features there, curb line, road center markings, power poles and so on. But the, uh, the key to, to understanding this is this is 3D data. This is point cloud data. Here we go, we just see the, the data coming on here. So we've got a rich, dense 3D point cloud from which we're able to extract our various topographic features. Just moving around here. Got our contours, picked out some curb line, gutter. Got the TOA, top of asphalt. Just gonna have a, a little look here in detail at this island. And just following the curve line along here, we can pick this out, pick out the road markings, the white lines, the yellow lines, the stop signs, and so on. Just coming back into the island again, we can start pulling out some of our uh, street furniture. In this case, we've got a manhole. This one is a, it's more of a GIS type of symbol. Got some very basic uh, 
symbology there, but they can obviously be positioned and uh, shown to scale as well. So we can quite happily toggle here between the um, point cloud and the uh, and, and the CAD data. So this is actually running in Civil 3D. The point cloud data is a, is a recap project processed through the Faro scene software. So exported as a recap into uh, into uh, Civil 3D uh, and then exploited using the uh, the Faro as built software. So this is a combination of uh, Civil 3D and uh, as built. So being a 3D data set, we're very easily able to go in and start generating some road alignments here. So we've got the, the center line of the road, we've got our alignment. Very easy to produce these elevations. And then we come into a series of cross sections through the road as well. So if we have a look in here, we're able to pick out our road crown our gutter, our top of curb, and so on. So all of this can be uh, generated automatically through the uh, through the as-built software. So a little bit more detail on how we can extract some of those features. We can use some cloud classification tools. In this case, we're looking at some data captured with the SX10, with the Trimble SX10 and using the uh, Trimble Business Center software. So this is a survey of a, a little industrial area, got some car parking areas, some, uh, some vegetation and so on, and some building line. We can easily extract the ground, get down to bare earth by clicking the, uh, the default point cloud. And the, uh, the algorithm here will extract the ground so we can uh, use that for contouring and so on. But what we might need to do is get into a little bit more detail. We actually want to start extracting some features. So if we look on the right hand side here, we've got our buildings, we've got ground. We've got some veg high vegetation, trees, poles and signs. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to uh, extract these features and, and isolate them within the point cloud. So we'll just set that algorithm running. The algorithm is looking for uh, for geometry and color. And it's able to split out those features. So this particular survey, if we move over here to the, uh, the Project Explorer, it's uh, just a four or five setups with the SX10. And uh, then using the scanning function to pick up the topography. So the, the algorithms run, we can see we've created these regions, the buildings that are highlighted in yellow. They've been extracted from the, uh, the default point cloud. That's what's left remaining. But the area here where perhaps the algorithm didn't quite pick everything up because of the reflection or perhaps it's glass building. The high vegetation, the trees, Highlighted in yellow again, and we have a, a sign here, a lamppost, I understand, that's been picked out on same principle for road signs. No power lines, as none of those were actually present in the, uh, in the survey. But very quickly, very simply, we're able to extract a, a lot of hard detail, a lot of volume of detail, and then we can move that into the CAD environment for, uh, for exploitation. So building on that theme, we can now do some surface and volume calculations. Again, we're going to be looking at a data set that's come from the, uh, the Trimble world using uh, the SX10 and the TBC software with the scanning module. So this is a stockpile. The aim here is to uh, isolate the stockpile and generate some surfaces and volumes from it. So, People in the mining environment, those that are moving material, a uh, very, very useful tool. The stockpile here, again, if you look at the, uh, the left-hand side under the, uh, the Explorer menu, 
four scans, traverse around the stockpile. And now we're going to isolate the stockpile by placing a polygon around its footprint. Let's get underway with that, quickly uh, pick this out. So at the moment, we have one single contiguous point cloud uh, labeled as default on the left hand side. So the stockpile is isolated, highlighted it there in yellow. Want to uh, keep that to one side, we'll just turn off the uh, default round there, where we can keep that for later if we need to revisit any topography. We're going to rename our isolated piece of the point cloud as, as the pile. And we'll just turn off the uh, the rest of the, the default, the ground. So we just have the stockpile there ready to go. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go to our surface tools. We're going to create a surface, first of all. So keeping the same theme going, we'll call this surface pile. Got some options here to change color and so on and so forth. Just some simple cat type functions to uh, make the detail pop. And then we're just uh, going to create a mesh here. So now, again, on the left hand side, we have our, our surface ready to uh, perform our volume calculation. You can see there we toggle between the point cloud and the surface. So moving into the earthwork report, this is where we're going to do our actual volume count. We have a couple of options here as to how we derive the volume. We can do surface to surface. If we've got dynamic stockpiles, volumes changing over time, we can uh, do a temporal analysis there with surface to surface. Or surface to elevation, so any kind of baseline, a plane, or, or a, a data point. In this particular case, we're going to use an elevation. We're going to establish our volume based on an elevation of 150 meters. And we're going to run that. Okay, so we've run the volume count, very quickly come up with a number here. So our, our volume of material above the 150 meters, 3,484 cubic meters, and we have an area of uh, 681 square meters. That's the footprint of our pile. So very quickly able to isolate bits and pieces within the point cloud and come up with some meaningful numbers around that. So our next workflow is, is going to be in respect of piping and ISO production. So I'm just going to hand this over to Sharif here. Thanks, Steve. Uh, you see my screen now? We oui. Yes. Yes, you're okay. good to go, Sharif. Thank you. Okay, great. So uh, we thought about showing you some videos um, in, in a plant, uh, you know, uh, environment. So. We have like a couple of options starting from showing, you know, modeling pipes and uh, also the steel work, uh, the tank analysis. So we selected uh, two videos. Uh, one show you the field to finish uh, for modeling pipes and beams. And also after that, you you uh, you create like ISOs for all the, the pipe runs you have. And then we'll have another video showing the, the tank analysis and uh, the inspection. So for this video is going to be um showing you in details um i'm gonna skip through the the video have around 10 minutes uh, video but it's mainly uh, uh, uh one pipe run 
and the uh, software we are dealing with it's called uh, Ferro as built uh, as I mentioned before it's uh, part of um, uh, Ferro it's a Ferro uh, product or a plugin under uh, plant or civil 3d and the workflow is mainly uh, you upload first your um, uh, KPM or uh, your catalogs that define all uh, the libraries for uh, the parts we have starting from uh, the pipes, all the carbon steels, um, all the flanges, diameters, uh, reducers, all these parts. So we have tons of options here. The first option is uh, you might use the one that comes with the software which is called Qubit Americas 2015. This is the one most of the users use and it got all the details inside. Or you could also upload your own uh, plant uh, specs. Uh, this is the other option. So if you have some parts on uh, uh, under plant, under Autodesk plant, you can also import uh, them, uh, so you can use them during uh, the modeling. Um, uh, so usually uh, when we work, uh, uh, we have tons of parts inside, you know, the, the model. And by the way, it's called Qubit because this is the old name for uh, Asbelt. So uh, if you work it with uh, Qubit before, uh, Ferro, when Ferro acquired it, it changed the name into point sense. And then around like one year ago, uh, the name changed to Asbelt. And this is the current name we have uh, right now. So when you import your uh, catalog, it comes with uh, tons of definitions and uh, libraries inside. So usually what do I, what do we do to uh, speed up the processing? We load uh, only the parts that relevant to the current uh, project you have. So for example, if you know that you have uh, the carbon steel three, uh, 300 or 150, you can easily copy uh, all the parts related to 300 from uh, the current catalog into the active set. So the software is going to look inside all these uh, parts. So uh, the workflow usually start with uh, first uh, uh, trying to detect or pre-calculate all the cylinders. So what's going to happen, we do this in advance to speed up uh, the detection process. So what's going to happen? The software is going to go through the data, try to find all, I would say, the cylinders uh, inside uh, the data. And then you should see here a report showing how many cylinders we have. And then after that, we can start the modeling. And uh, by uh, predicting all these cylinders in advance, uh, the software will take less time to um, show you the modeling parts. We can also turn on the detected cylinders. Uh, you see them in, in brown, so uh, you see how many cylinders have detected. And then after that, we can st uh, start with the workflow. And uh, uh, the second step here, it's called uh, walk the run. So the user has to click only on two points on uh, each pipe, and the software is going to try to automatically detect what's, uh, what kind of part or piece between these two points. Uh, so the user has to validate, um, you know, the suggestions or the predictions uh, done by the software. And usually what's going to happen, the software is going to give you, uh, uh, like uh, if you see here on this screen, the first uh, part showing the automatic detected uh, part and uh, the one at the bottom showing the manual one. So the user has just to validate. Um, and uh, once this is done, you can insert this part and then you can go to, to the next uh, one. What's nice about the software, because you already predicted all the cylinder, that the software is going to also predict the next element. So you can go uh, farther uh, through the, the run, and you can validate the next, next element. So we are done with, with the elbow. So we have a, like a, a 90 degrees uh, elbow right now. So we, the user has to do it. And then the next piece, we are going to face a flange. Uh, so we can narrow down the search by just uh, typing F. And the software is going to uh, show us uh, uh, you know, what's uh, matching uh, the point cloud and the catalogs we have. We can insert the flange and uh, double check, you know, the pneumonia diameter we have. And then we have different options to um, insert the, the flange. Um, so the user has to um, uh, try to pick one point on the point cloud, either on uh, the front face or uh, back of face. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit to how the flange is uh, inserted. So the user can uh, toggle back and forth between the front and back face. Uh, again, it depends on the view, the, uh, the quality of the data. So usually we try to have uh, only the point cloud and nothing in the background. So we make sure we, we click on the foreground uh, pipe. 
<clears throat> excuse me. And you see right now we can toggle the visibility. Uh, I hopefully you could see um, the red line was showing that we are gonna insert the flange uh, from the front face. So once you, the user click, the software is gonna jump to the next part, which is also back to back uh, flange. So this is gonna be done uh, automatically. <clears throat> Again, um, as we keep going, the software is gonna uh, predict the next element. You go to the list, uh, either it's a reducer or it's, uh, if you know it's a, it's a pipe, for sure, you need to have some knowledge about the data you're working with, especially, you know, the, the diameter, uh, the carbon steel specs, all these stuff. <clears throat> so the software is going to go step by step. Um, and this is the interaction between the user and, um, you know, the software just to validate uh, the next element and you make sure it's inserted uh, in the correct spot. And we don't care at this point if you see some uh, deviation uh, in the modeling because in the next step, we're going to constrain uh, uh, the modeling and we're going to constrain the whole pipe run before uh, exporting it in, into AutoCAD. So if you just uh, skip uh, this part, we can also, after we're done with the whole run, we can turn off the point cloud and uh, visualize only uh, the modeling. And as I mentioned, you might see some uh, shifts or uh, <clears throat> uh, in, you know, shift between the different parts. And as I told you, as I told you uh, 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 the next step would be constraining the pipe run. So we have uh, two ways to const uh, constrain the run. Um, uh, usually you go with the second one. So what you need to do is just click on one uh, piece or one part and then hit enter. The software is going to track down the whole pipe for you. And we have two uh, strategies here. I would recommend using the second one, which is really more on uh, the asphalt uh, uh, plant model more than the pipe run itself. Again. It's a case scenario. It depends on uh, the data you're working with. If you trust more, uh, you know, the, the pipe run or you trust more the catalogs you do have. So the user has to decide about that. And we can see here that we already got, uh, got rid of uh, the shift we got and we have very smooth uh, run right now. So it's good also to mention that we have a specific tool to insert uh, uh, the flanges. It's called a fit, a fit in. Uh, tie point. So if you like to uh, place a specific flange and you need to have more flexibility on uh, these tools, you can use this as a separate. But uh, uh, walk the run includes, uh, um, you know, inserting flanges as well. So the last tip is to create a CAD, CAD object. So up to now, we have only qubit objects. So you can, you're not able to share it with your client or any CAD user. So usually what we do export it into AutoCAD. So we'll end up with uh, AutoCAD um, object and also you can double check the properties of this object. And now you can easily extend it, add another part because it's part of AutoCAD uh, wallet right now and you could easily share it with your uh, uh, clients. Um, the, next, the next step would be um, uh, creating the ISO. Um, so usually what I do is just, I'm gonna show you like quick, uh, creating a very quick and uh, simple uh, ISO, so we get like a drawing for all the runs we uh, we have. Uh, so when we run the tool, we have to select uh, the whole run, and then we go through uh, some uh, parameters here. We are going to save the ISOs, the ISO style. Uh, you can also go to some advanced tool if you like to add more details, some text, all this stuff. And then after that, creating the ISO is going to take a couple of uh, seconds. And once it's done, the software is going to show you uh, uh, like an information box uh, that the ISOs were created, so you can click. So we have the software here um, split the run into, uh, uh, or the pipe run into two, uh, two ISOs. So this is, um, uh, you know, the output. So the user can print out this and he can uh, validate, uh, you know, the, the actual or do as built if you would like to do some walk run on, on site. So uh, this is the first one uh, relating to the plant. The second one is going to be uh, <clears throat> for the tank inspection and analysis. And um, actually, we're going to use different software. Right now, we're going to use uh, Railworks. So um, <clears throat> we have different workflows here. Um, the first one is use a dedicated tool for the tank analysis in Railworks. Or if you don't have this tool, um, um, you could also do kind of like a surface-to-surface -surface comparison. So in the first video, I'm going to show you how we do the analysis 
with the, uh, with a dedicated tank analysis tool in Railworks. And in the second video, we'll show you how you can just fit a, a cylinder to the to the tank and start to do surface and surface and create heat maps and all those stuff. So um, so this is the first video. I will show you the the tank analysis again. This is Trimble Real Works. Uh, we got different modules in the software starting from uh, the registration and then after that you jump into uh, all the survey, the surface analysis, the modeling and inspections. And we have a dedicated uh, storage tank uh, analysis uh, and calibration as well. So if you like to calibrate your tank, uh, you could do it as well. But for this uh, video, we're going to focus only on, um, you know, the tank analysis. So usually what we do uh, or any user uh, doing with this uh, workflow, uh, we need to separate the tank body or the shell. So usually we do this manually, but we have very nice tool here in, in, in Railworks to automatically um, 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 you know, it classifies the tank. So we have main classes like uh, the roof, uh, the shell, uh, the dead wood, and the bottom. So I remember the first time I started with this, it took for me like a couple of hours just to um, uh, model all uh, the pipes and the dead wood inside and then separate them uh, from the shell and all the cleaning. Uh, so we have all these like done automatically here in a couple of minutes. So once you, you are done with the tank setup and tank definition here, um, uh, the software will create like an entity or an object. Uh, and then after that, you can take this right away to the next step uh, by uh, start to focus on uh, the tank shelf itself. So usually what we do, um, <clears throat> we try to create kind of grids uh, where we need to have the inspection. And uh, since we have a very dense point cloud data, it's not just total station shots. Uh, we can uh, densify uh, the grid. So we can create vertical uh, uh, inspections, we call them stations, and we can also create uh, like horizontal ones, uh, we call them courses in, in the software here. So usually uh, the user goes with, um, you know, picking these courses at where we have, uh, you know, the, the melt here or um, uh, the, the, the different pieces melt together of, uh, of the vertical tank. Uh, we can also uh, evaluate um, uh, the tank, uh, the bottom part, if you like to do the formation analysis uh, uh, and create also uh, grids and densify them. Usually we create more densified grids uh, towards the out, uh, outside <clears throat> of the tank. Once we are happy, we start to create, uh, uh, you know, the, the report. We can go through some parameters here. Um, um, <clears throat> And since it's vertical tank, what's going to happen once you're uh, done with this? The software is going to create uh, like a, a kind of a documentation or a report. So I'm going to switch uh, here to uh, the report. Uh, so Steve, you see the report? Okay. So. Yeah. Um, this report is going to be created um, automatically by the software. I have seen a lot of people doing this in, in the old school way, uh, uh, where you take you know the deviation and start to put in them an Excel sheet, and you have your own formulas to create you know the cross section and the heat map, all those stuff. But here we have this done automatically. So the software is going to create this rich uh, document, so yeah, uh, you can easily add your logo, edit any details inside. So we'll have. Uh, first, like the header where uh, the tank is defined, you know, the diameter, uh, uh, the verticality of the tank, uh, the height. And then uh, for this scenario, we created, uh, if you remember, we created eight vertical stations. And, um, and this is the tolerance set by the user. Um, so usually what's going to happen, the software is going to fit a, a vertical cylinder to the tank and uh, compare it against, uh, you know, the actual point cloud. So any deviation uh, um, uh, from 3.5 uh, mils or centimeter. Again, it depends on uh, the specs of the project. The software is going to highlight this uh, station, and you will have a kind of um, sketches uh, for both, you know, the the verticality and the roundness. And these are the the uh, two main pieces we have to deal with when we uh, inspect the tank. So, in the first part of the uh, the the report, we'll have. Uh, verticality uh, report. So the software is showing you, for example, here we have station one and five. So one 
in the front and the five feet the other way uh, on the other side of the tank. And um, this is the reference station where we have uh, the black line. And then based on the threshold uh, parameters the software used, uh, the software is going to place uh, these two green uh, lines. And any deformation or deviation of the point cloud or the best fit blue uh, polyline to the point cloud, the software uh, is going to report. For sure, this is exaggerated, uh, but we have more details here. So we have kind of a, a table showing which course station number one, station number one has uh, failed or, or passed uh, the deviation. So we have here, we use uh, 3.5 centimeter uh, tolerance. And then here we have how much deviation. So we'll see if, if you are within the 3.5, we are good. We have, we pass, we have green colors, uh, uh, but above this one will will fit. Um, so uh, we can skip this, uh, show you the other part of uh, the, the report. So as I told you, the first part is uh, mainly regarding to the verticality and the second part is uh, the roundness. Uh, so the same idea. So we have also, um, uh, you know, the reference is a black circle and then we have two uh, uh, inside and outside uh, circles created uh, based on the, the threshold set by the user. And then we have the point cloud, the gray uh, dots. The user has option also while it's creating the report to turn off the point cloud. If you'd like to, to, to see it uh, in, uh, in the report and if you like just to see uh, the, the, the best fit uh, polar line or the blue one. Also, we'll have a table showing uh, all the details. Uh, so now we are dealing with one course and we have uh, 360 stations. So remember we have eight stations starting from one uh, and the opposite side we have the five and then we go all the way clockwise to number eight. So the software is gonna report uh, all these stations in course number one and so on. Um, again, uh, if you have your own analysis software or um, reporting, you can take all these uh, values, paste them in Excel sheet and start to do your uh, uh, um, you know, standard uh, reporting. Um, so um, the second way of doing that uh, is assembly. Um, we create um, um, uh, like a, a kind of a model. We, we model the, the vertical tank uh, by just using a very simple uh, cloud-based fitting inside the software. And then after that, we fit a cylinder and then after that, we uh, pick uh, both. Uh, we, we can also constrain the fitting to make sure it's upright uh, cylinder because we need to double check the verticality as well. Um, so this is one of the tools, modeling tools we have in, in the software. And then after that, we can uh, easily compare two objects. Since we have the original point cloud and we have the model, we can pick both objects um, and then we can run uh, the analysis uh, tool. Um, how it works, the software is going to create um, a kind of a heat map uh, by projecting uh, the point cloud uh, to the cylinder surface, just orthogonal projection, and then we'll have a kind of a flat uh, heat map. Um, uh, uh, what's nice here also in the software is that we have a cylinder projection, so if you have any uh, uh, curved shape, you don't have to be limited to the uh, horizontal projection like we see in Civil 3D, for example. Uh, so here we have an option to tell the software that we, we need to project the data in a cylinder shape. And then you can go through some parameters and then you'll get, uh, the, you know, the heat map at the, at the top here showing, uh, um, you know, uh, the different deviation starting from minus to uh, 0.28 up to uh, positive 18. And then after that, the user has the option to take this far, farther into uh, analyzer tool, so the user can uh, go and create tons of deliverables from, uh, you know, the heat map, uh, starting from cross sections, uh, um, uh, contours, uh, volumes. Um, um, I have seen some clients just, uh, they are creating like contours. Let's say you're looking for uh, five mils deformation between, um, you know, the tank and cylinder. So you can take this. Uh, a contour line and then you can export it into uh, the total station and then you can easily stick out uh, these points. So you can find these points in, in the actual uh, 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 scenario. Okay, uh, last option here is ISO, um, ISO curve, uh, which are uh, basically uh, the contours. 
So we're just going to skip this couple of uh, seconds here. So this is the contours. Again, if you are happy, you can hit create all, and the software is going to add this new ent entity into uh, the software. And then we'll have the map ISO curve. And then after that, you can uh, start to do analysis, uh, or you can export them uh, um, um, into the gun, or if you like to take them into any other software for uh, for analysis. So we'll uh, jump back to Steve. All right, thank you. So what we're going to look at now is a very simple uh, floor extraction something you might want to do in a building survey or a, a boma type of environment and this is using uh, the as built software again with data from uh, from a forest faro scanner so what we have here is a scan of a uh, a building we've got uh, the top stories of the building here And we're going to take a slice through it. We're going to take a slice so we can identify the uh, the main structure, the walls, and so on. So we're going to determine, determine the thickness of that slice. Set that at about twenty centimeters. So you can see we just uh, cropped above and below that that slice there. And to all intents and purposes, we have a floor plan. Albeit what we're looking at here is uh, is point cloud information. We'll just uh, isolate that and uh, and name it here. So the tool we're looking at here, this is embedded within the Asbuilt software. It's uh, a Faro product that was in the old uh, VirtuServe product. And a, a similar tool now exists within the new Asbuilt model of software as well. So moving forward, you'll be able to do this using the, uh, the model of software. So the idea is that rather than blindly uh, click on the point cloud and then join the dots as we, we move around the room perimeter. I'm going to do something a little bit more intelligent here. We're going to actually create uh, an orthogonal drawing. So we've just picked a couple of points on each of the uh, the walls there. Two points on each wall. We're not too interested in the corners at the moment. As we work our way round into this uh, next area, we see it's a little bit sparse points. I'm just going to set our tool here to uh, to orthogonal. So the next uh, next piece is going to be at a right angle to the the last section of wall, put the fitting back on and pick a couple of points in that wall again. So the, the points that we're picking, they're highlighted by a green bounding box. And as we get to the doorway, we're not interested here in the uh, the door jams, the door furniture and that kind of thing. We're just going to shoot right across, uh, across the door opening to the next side. We work our way around again. That's uh, another opening coming up. Pick two points here, continue across the opening, pick another two points, and then we're going to close that. So now everything's been produced orthogonally. There's no, uh, no deviation there. We have uh, a series of straight parallel walls with, uh, with nice 90 degree corners. So the next piece, the, the area here labeled Bistro, we're going to try and replicate that, that process again, but because our slice was through the, uh, the, the large landscape windows, we don't have a lot of definition here. So we're just going to drop that slice down to something closer to, to floor level here. So now we see the uh, some much better definition closer to the floor. Again, we're going to pick two points on that wall, jump across the door opening, pick another two points, and then we lose a little bit, bit of definition here on this uh, this wall because of the uh, the heater, because of the radiator. So again, make that orthogonal around the corners. Back into adding two points on a, on a straight wall. And back to that process again, just a point either side of that uh, area of air detail with the, uh, with the heater. And then we're going to close that. So we've now produced our, our two uh, rooms, our two floor plans, turn off the point cloud there, and we've got something we can readily use in a, in a CAD environment here. 
So we can easily take that back into CAD. We can start manipulating that and extracting whatever we need to in terms of adding our uh, title boxes and so on. So the next piece is uh, some floor flatness. So I've got another interior application here if you want to look at the floor deviation and I'll hand you back to, uh, to Sharif for this one. Sharif, are you ready to go here? Sharif, I, I don't think we have your audio. Can you check whether you're muted or not? Yeah, you, you hear me now? Yeah, you loud and clear, thank you. Okay, great, yeah. So um, so the idea here, we have two ways to um, uh, check, um, you know, the flatness of the floors. Uh, the first one is to use um, regular, uh, you know, flattening tool that uh, just simply fit a plane to the floor and then do analysis, comparison, surface to surface between the point cloud, the floor, and the, uh, the best fit plane at a specific elevation, or you can use uh, the FF and FL tool, which is a dedicated tool. And this tool is going to uh, give you a report uh, that matches the ASTME uh, 1155 standards. So if you are looking to have a report with uh, with these standards, um, you'd like to provide these um, results to your client that matches the standards, we have the tool for that. But for this video, just I'm going to show the, the first one. So the idea here in the first one, um, um, since we are uh, basically here interested in segmenting the floor, um, we have a couple of segmentation tools. You can maybe get rid of some point outside the windows or uh, outside the area of interest. Uh, so the user can create a kind of a clipping box or bulletin around the area of interest. And then usually the classic workflow uh, consists of trying to do tons of cleaning to separate uh, uh, the roof, you know, the, the ceiling, or the internal furniture, the pipes and cables, all this stuff. But we have we have very nice tool here to automatically uh, isolate uh, uh, the floor, um, <clears throat> and 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 this is going to be like the the workflow. So you, you, we just like first do like a rough cleaning first to get rid of the point outside the area of interest, and then in the next step we'll try to run uh, the. Uh, you know, the floor uh, segmentation or the floor classification tool. So the software is going to go through the data, um, try to detect uh, uh, the floor, and then after that is going to separate the floor from the rest of the point cloud. Um, you'll see here the software already uh, 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 started to uh, detect, you know, all the uh, above the floor elements. And by the way, if you, if you are interested to try this by yourself, we have the, the floor um, extraction under the sampling tool, uh, so it's part of uh, uh, you know the sampling tool is called floor extraction uh, for indoor. We have also another tool similar to the ground extraction, similar to the tool um, uh, Vic, uh, Stephen Vicker showed uh, earlier in the first uh, in the first video. So um, you just need to pick the tool, hit extract. The software is going to take a couple of seconds, go through the data, and then after that, it's going to highlight all uh, non-floor um, uh, object or all the object doesn't that doesn't you know belong to, to the floor so the software is going to highlight them in in, in red <clears throat> and uh, the user also has the option to um, validate uh, you know the classification so we can easily double check you should see these objects in in red uh, we can also do kind of a sanity check here to double check that we are not missing any object uh, of the floor we can go back and try to move uh, the data if you feel that we uh, this is part of the floor it's like a ramp or some we see some scenarios like that we can easily move this point from um, you know the non-floor into the floor uh, classes so uh, in the next step usually what we do since we separated the the, the floor uh, we'll start to focus on the floor and start to do uh, to do the, the analysis 
So um, <clears throat> usually um, the first step here is to uh, <clears throat> set uh, the reference point. So usually, as I told you before, uh, what's going to happen, the software is going to fit a plane uh, to the point cloud. So the user has the option to set the elevation of this reference plane. So we're starting first by defining the area of interest in step one, and then after that, you set the grid size. Uh, again, it depends on the resolution you like to go and create the reports. Uh, since you have laser scanning data, it can go up to maybe five mils. Again, it depends on uh, number of setups. And then you can also, if you have a benchmark or a reference height, you can type in the elevation. And then also <clears throat> you can, uh, if you, you feel that you got some holes or due to occlusions, you can also ask the software to fill in these holes. And then after that, the software is gonna create a kind of a heat map <clears throat> for you. And what's uh, above the reference, uh, refer reference plane is gonna be in red. What's uh, below is gonna be in, in, in blue. So um, <clears throat> again, the user can go back and forth and try to <clears throat> change the parameters, change the grid size. Uh, I have some clients looking for a specific volume, so you can start to manipulate the reference elevation to get into the volume they are looking for. Once you are happy with the results, you can easily go and create uh, deliverables. So uh, uh, RealWorks here offers a couple of uh, uh, deliverables out of um, you know, the floor flattening tools. So we're gonna get actually like a folder. Um, so we'll have a, a, a report, rich report, similar to the one uh, we have seen with the tank. And then we'll have a kind of a heat map uh, with annotations, uh, all the deviations annotated on it. And then we'll have two text files. Uh, so what I'm gonna show you right now, I'll show you maybe the, the first um, uh, one, which is uh, the report. So this is the output report from uh, RealWorks. Again, we'll have the header, uh, timing, um, uh, project name, units, all those stuff. And then some information about uh, the parameters uh, used, like the grid spacing, the reference elevation. Um, and then we'll have also, if you are interested only in the cut and fill, you can grab the, this info uh, very quickly, uh, the area. And then we'll have a kind of a heat map. And then at the bottom here, we'll have the link uh, where this uh, heat map is saved. Uh, the other uh, part of the report uh, is going to be uh, this heat map with uh, deviations. So if you like to uh, print this out and take it with you uh, to the site, you can start to do the comparison and see where we have the cut and fill. So you'll see we have the blue and we have the red uh, at each uh, grid. So to remind you, you know, the red is above the reference and then the blue uh, is the ones, uh, the points or the grid areas uh, below the reference. Uh, the other um, piece that we're gonna get in the report um, is gonna be kind of um, a header. If you like to take, uh, you know, either the heat map or, uh, you know, the, the output text file into your own software for drafting purpose like Civil 3D or any other software. So the software is gonna give you uh, the code of the four corners and in addition to that we'll have another text file uh, showing um, uh, the, uh, all the grids starting from the bottom left corner and then we'll have x y and z coordinates and then the last value is going to be the number of deviation so again if you if you have your own tools or um, a way to report uh, the deviation you can take this into excel or your own software as a text file and then you can create uh, your own report so, so go back to the slides here, and then we'll uh, done with the videos and time for question and answers. So, if you like, you can type in your questions uh, on the chatting here panel. Okay, so we've got a couple here, Sharif, a couple relating to the, the volume count. One of them is what kind of accuracy would we expect with uh, performing a volume calculation? Um, um, so the idea here, this is depend on the parameters you're gonna use. Or, so usually if you are looking for um, a high accurate one, usually we play with the grid size. So if you think about the volume, uh, how the software is gonna create the volume, you will have a flat plane and then we have bars. Uh, the dimension of each bar is gonna be the grid size. So if you already have very high dense point cloud, 
you can play with this parameter and get uh, up to um, you know maximum uh, the the you know the point cloud resolution. So if you already correct um, create um, uh, you know capture point cloud with five mil point spacing, you can create a grid size of five mils. Uh, this is going to give you the best accuracy because it's going to uh, describe the you know completely the topography and all uh, the feature you have in your pipe. Okay. Another one here is, is it possible to generate the pile volume using the perimeter of the pile as a reference surface? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you just be able to uh, plot out the footprint of the pile, use that as a surface, and then use the surface to surface tools. Uh, got some yeah, questions. You, could also trim, you could also trim the surface. So we have, we have a tool in business center to add um, uh, like a boundary. Uh, so usually what we do, if we have a boundary around the surface, either you did Tobu shots around it or you, you did feature code processing, you can first create the surface and then after that we add this boundary to the surface and actually the software is going to trim the surface based on this boundary. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions here relating to the, uh, uh, the piping piece. Um, does as built display a 2D wireframe? Uh, yes, it does. So all it's doing is um, uh, assigning geometry to the point cloud, and that geometry, once it's in the CAD environment, plant 3D and so on, uh, we can display that just using the conventional uh, Autodesk tools as wireframe or solid. Um, one here: Can you um, can you model piping for the existing conditions? Where survey day, the survey point cloud does not match perfectly with a catalog. So that's a, a sagging or damaged piping, piping that's rotated and so on. Could you speak to yeah. that, Shuri? Yeah, we have we have two options here. Uh, maybe I didn't show you this in the videos, but um, again, if you have uh, good data, the modeling is going to be handy and smooth. But if you have some noise in the data or misalignments or heating, uh, heat waves in the data, we have some parameters to tweak. Uh, so usually what we do, uh, uh, we set these parameters in advance before uh, doing the modeling, and one of them is the noise level. So you can uh, set a uh, high noise level, so you tell the software that we have much noise in the data, so the software is going to take care of that. And on the other side, if you have your own, um, you know, models or catalogs, um, um, as I mentioned before, if they are existing plans, you can import them before the modeling. And the software is going to use them as a reference, or um, yeah, you could also uh, edit the current ones. Okay. Is the webinar available for download later? Yes, it will be available for download. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll send out uh, a communication to everyone participating as to where that can be found later on. What are the main differences between the two scanners mentioned at the start of the, the presentation? So we had the two scanners there, the, the Faro and the Trimble SX-10. So yes, the, so the SX-10 is a total station and laser scanner uh, as well. So for uh, surveyors who are interested in doing traversing and back sighting and uh, having the right. georeferencing right away in the field, uh, we have the SX-10. Um, on the other hand, we have uh, like the the Faro. It's one million per uh, one million point per second, so it's way way faster than uh, the S X ten and handy and light as well. Okay. Are the piping and structural modeling tools available in Revit? I'm assuming that was the uh, the as built tools with the, with the plant three D. Yeah, so so the idea here um, to get the best benefit uh, of the you know the piping modules, we recommend using it under plant. But if you have a uh, civil 3D, uh, uh, for example, AutoCAD, you still could use it. But for Revit, uh, um, I don't believe so. It's Revit is going to be mainly uh, you know walls and and so on, not for for piping. Uh, Sharif, could you just advance these slides very quickly, please?
So just running out of time here, I just want to get some uh, contact details up on the screen. There's a, a lot of questions coming in fast and furious at the end, and we are we are at time. So I just want to make sure that, that folks do have the opportunity to reach out to us here to, uh, to address those questions. Yeah, and uh, we are happy to help at, at any point. And um, 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 in addition to, uh, we provide uh, rentals. Um, if you rent a scanner or S610, uh, we give you like a demo code during the rental period. So if you like to uh, to play with the software, uh, feel free to reach uh, to any one of us. Um, um, and again, um, the software we mentioned in this presentation uh, they deal with laser scanners in addition also to any uh, point cloud. So if you have a point cloud coming from drones, coming from uh, laser uh, scanning mobile units, you still can do all these, um, you know, uh, workflows with, uh, with the same data. Okay, so we are just slightly over time. Uh, I'm just looking at the questions here. Uh, a lot of very technical questions coming in in terms of uh, uh, specifications for for each of the sensors so uh, please reach out direct to myself or Sharif afterwards and we'll, we'll try and fill in those gaps but, but thank you everyone for, for joining as I said at the beginning this is uh, uh, meant to be a taster of what it is what is possible with laser scanning and the software solutions there will be more detailed presentations following looking at very specific uh, items so more in-depth pipe extraction more in-depth uh, building modeling and so on. So once again, thank you for your time and uh, hopefully we'll catch you again on another webinar soon. Yeah, thanks and have a good day.